Welcome to the MUFG Global Markets Podcast with Ehsan Komen, Head of Commodities, ESG and Emerging Markets Research EMEA. It's Friday 1st March 2024 and in this week's podcast with Ehsan, we discuss commodities. The following podcast is intended for professional investors and eligible counterparties only and not for retail clients. Any content should not be regarded as an offer to conduct investment business or an investment recommendation, but for information purposes only. Hi, Ehsan, how are you? I'm well, Nesnina, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So Ehsan, we turn to commodities in this week's podcast, and a key theme with our clients appears to be on the implications of US Federal Reserve interest rate cuts on the commodities complex. Can you offer our listeners the key takeaways? Absolutely, Nesnina. So some context here. So investors took a March rate cut off the table and scaled back their expectations that the Fed will begin cutting interest rates in May after data showed US analyzed inflation eased less than expected in January and markets seem to be pricing in a June start to the easing cycle. Yet there are still four more CPI prints scheduled for release before FOMC's June meeting and our US rate strategist maintains his call that the Fed will start lowering rates, in fact, a month earlier in May. Now, given the size of the overall fall in inflation over the past year, we have considered the performance of the commodity markets as the Fed approaches a pause in its hiking cycle and thereafter easing. So, there's Nina, looking into details of past Fed cutting cycles, the main takeaways heading into June are the following. So first, commodities historically have generated positive returns going into the first Fed cut. And so commodities have typically rallied in the six months heading into a Fed cutting cycle with an average return of around 3%, with most of these gains coming between three months and six months before the initial cut. In a period we are currently in MUFG's house view with the Fed easing in May. Now, second, post the initial Fed cut, commodities have rallied by an average of 4% over the next 12 months, with the Bloomberg Commodity BCOM index increasing in three out of the last five cutting cycles, posting an average return of around 4% and a medium return of around 8%. Now, third, Fed cuts without an accompanying recession led to strong gains in 1995, but the 2001 softish landing still weighed heavily on the complex, and the only cutting cycle in the last five Fed cuts that was not followed by a recession was indeed in 1995. Now, under this clear cut soft landing, the Bloomberg Commodities Index increased by no less than 20% in the first nine months following the initial rate cut in July 1995, which was the second largest rally in our five cycle sample size that we've taken. Now, fourth and finally, Nesnina, I would flag that the nature of the cuts, that is, if it's good versus bad, matters. And so what I mean here is that commodities should enjoy strong positive returns during a good cutting cycle where growth remains firm amidst declining inflation and vice versa, suffer negative returns when experiencing a bad cutting cycle when growth is decelerating and inflation remains sticky. Similarly, a cutting cycle, because recession is imminent, will generate very different returns compared to an easing cycle in a soft landing scenario. And for us, Ms. Nina, the current economic data is increasingly reminiscent of this 1995 cycle, perhaps the only example really of a soft landing when the Fed cut only by 75 basis points amid a mid-cycle adjustment. And notably, that decision to lower rates was not triggered by an imminent recession or increasing unemployment. And in terms of the sectoral performance across the commodity space, which ones are best positioned to outperform? So Nazina, by sector, energy and precious metals have displayed the strongest gains following initial Fed cuts. Now looking across the commodity sub-indices, on average, the Bloomberg Commodity Energy sub-index has rallied by no less than 12% in the 12 months post-initial Fed cuts while the Bloomberg Commodity Precious Metals Index has increased by 8%. Now, energy has also displayed relatively strong average performance heading into the initial cut, returning 15% on average over the past five Fed 
cutting cycles. And a similar setup looks likely this time around too, given an improving global economy and signs of a tightening market going into mid-year. Now, the Bloomberg Commodity Precious Metals Index is the only major sub-index to post positive returns over the 12 months following all of the last five initial Fed cuts. And given the emergence of a stronger relationship between gold prices and the US 10-year real yields since around the mid-2000s, more recent Fed cutting cycles have proven even more bullish for precious metals, which is hedging weaker performance across other commodities. So oil and this commodities have historically generated positive returns going into the first Fed cut, as well as after. By sector, energy and precious metals have displayed the strongest gains following initial cuts. And the current setup, in our view, is reminiscent of the soft landing 1995 cycle when commodities surged by around 20% in the aftermath. Thank you for your insights, Ehsan. We look forward to hearing from you again next time. Thanks, Nazdina. Talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to this MUFG Global Markets podcast. Rate, review and subscribe and contact your MUFG sales rep for more information. Come back next week for more insights from the Global Markets Research Team.